everybody and welcome to my channel. I recently see that I got a whole bunch of new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining the family. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. I do upload new videos every Tuesday that showcase my IVF journey. You will notice that those videos are IVF rough. I always tell people the reality of IVF is pretty raw and I hope that those video vlogs help you as you navigate your journey. My goal was to be able to share my experience the way that I benefited from others on YouTube and I hope that my journey is able to do the same for you. Every once in a while, I'll hop on here and um, get prepped up like I did today and um, be able to share with you common questions that I receive from individuals and I address some of these answers in the video in the hopes that it will outreach and also be able to help others. So I hope that the conversation today about the tips that my husband and I took to avoid miscarriage will also help you if you are on a journey towards IVF. The first tip that I would suggest is research and understand miscarriage as much as you can. One of the resources that my husband and I used is a British doctor called Leslie Regan. I was watching YouTube videos on um, specialists who were familiar with miscarriage just to hear the causes of them because for my journey, we had to go through multiple cycles of IVF. So I was contemplating a lot of things and I wanted to really understand some of the obstacles that may come on our way to baby. And Leslie Regan has written a book about miscarriage. She is amazing. I'm actually gonna put um, the documentary with her talking about miscarriage and the causes in the comment section below. So if you just wanted to do some research and understand it, you'll be able to you know, just get some light into what the cause of miscarriage typically is. The second reason we um, wanted to do research on miscarriage and what really worked for us was when I saw YouTubers who were going through their fertility journey really talking about the reality of what we call the DNC. There are some people who, when they go through miscarriage, their baby actually develops up to a certain uh, point in time. And unfortunately, the doctor has to um, go in there and remove the baby. And it's almost like giving birth to the baby. And after they do that, there's a kind of healing process, both physically and emotionally. What was great about hearing those stories ahead of me and my husband starting our IVF journey was that it allowed us to see what the reality could be out there. And for my age at the time, I really couldn't afford getting a year off to heal from a cycle that re resulted in, in what could have resulted in a miscarriage. So it, I was very purposeful in asking my doctor early on, are there any steps we can take to avoid a miscarriage so that we can do the back-to-back -back cycles uh, based on um, what my diagnosis is? For those of you that may not know, um, for my diagnosis, I did need multiple cycles of IVF. Um, and so it was pertinent that I be in a position to do these back-to-back with the, um, the youth that I had left, for lack of a better word, because um, I did have a 43-year-old ex. Which leads me third to talk about the causes of uh, miscarriage. The most common cause of miscarriage for women in my age group, and I think uh, most women go through this, is what we call aneuploidy. Aneuploidy is when the chromosomes, because um, you get 23 chromosomes from um, you know, one half, and 23 chromosomes from the other half, which makes a total of 46 chromosomes. And so if there is an issue with the chromosome, the body detects it, and then um, that's what leads uh, you know, to the miscarriage. It is nothing that anybody can do. This is just something that is already predicted at the time. There's nothing that you can really do afterwards. It's no fault of anybody. Um, it is just what it is. And so that was very powerful for us to know about the cause of miscarriage because then it allowed my husband and I to really ask, what can we then do to check on this aneuploidy, to check on these chromosomes? And um, which leads me into another uh, discovery that we um, were able to explore in terms of working to prevent a miscarriage. And that is ensuring that we do PGTA testing. 
BGTA testing is pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. And some individuals um, I see on YouTube say PGS as well, which is pre-genetic screening. Um, but the PGTA test for us was something that we could not turn away from, even though it was expensive. Um, and so what that test does is if you are fortunate enough to have an embryo that makes it to the fifth day where it has 100 plus cells, they take a little sample of the cell and they check the chromosomes. And they will give you back a report that lets you know about the condition of that particular embryo so that you can uh, be informed. That was really, really powerful for us because again, um, I just learned from a lot of YouTubers the pain um, of women getting pregnant and then um, having a miscarriage later on. And, um, and it's just hard when, when, when you see, you know, your fellow women going through that. And this PGTA offered us a way, um, a step in, in, in the direction of preventing it. And so um, what we then decided to do is if we were lucky enough to get our first embryos, what we decided, we would then save money to be able to do the PGTA test because it was very, very expensive. The other cause of miscarriage that would be helpful um, for you to know um, is uh, checking on clotting factors and natural killer cells. And um, what I did, because remember, I was going through IVF. We had one precious embryo that we had genetically tested that came back euploid with no chromosomal issues. So we knew that we had that part covered in terms of the chromosomes at least and it was going to be the embryo that we were going to transfer. And so one of the things that I did not know is if I could carry a pregnancy because I've never been pregnant. And so uh, we thought it was worth it, my husband and I, for me to just get tested for clotting factors in advance of the transfer and natural killer cells in advance of the transfer so that if they detected that there was an issue with that, then maybe in the worst case scenario, my husband and I could then consider using a gestational surrogate. So sometimes what happens is if you don't get that testing and you transfer the embryo and you have those other issues, it can also cause a miscarriage. And so we didn't wanna take that chance. And so that was, I would say the third way we avoided miscarriage was we did that testing even though um, I didn't need to or there was no diagnosis because I just couldn't risk it. I didn't want to put back the embryo and then go through a miscarriage and then they say, oh, you have a clotting issue or you have natural killer cells. So I did the test, paid out of pocket for it, but it was definitely worth it. And I found out that I had no clotting issues um, or a natural killer cell issue. And so that gave us the confidence to uh, go ahead with the transfer, uh, knowing that we had um, you know, dotted our I's and crossed our T's as far as um, learning about some of these potential causes for miscarriage. All right, everyone, there you have it. Those uh, are the tips I wanted to share with you about my journey and the, the steps that we took to try to prevent a miscarriage. Um, it is never a guarantee. You just never know what's going to happen. But um, there are some things that you can proactively do, and that's why I wanted to share it in this space so that if you are um, going through IVF, and you have a precious embryo um, and you're trying to kind of figure out the next steps, you'd at least be able to know, um, you know what has worked for others. So thank you for watching, guys. Um, if you have any other tips about what you have observed about miscarriage or other causes that could help others, please share them in the comments below. Um, I got a lot of inspiration from other YouTubers, you know, just sharing their miscarriage stories and what they ended up discovering afterwards because for what for many women what happens guys is they um, go through the pregnancy um, and then they if they go through a miscarriage what the doctor will do is they will take a sample and then report afterwards to them about what is the possible cause and I was so grateful to see these videos because I learned from them and it's excruciating to go through that to go through a pregnancy go through four weeks five weeks six weeks and then have to lose the, the baby and possibly even go through a DNC. And so 
we then decided to work backwards to ensure that that didn't happen. So hopefully for some of you, um, this will probably be able to help. Until my next video, everybody, bye.